Dr. Pratibha Vasan on behalf of Jaipuria Institute of Management, NOIDA, welcome you to the International Management Research Conference, IMRC 2019. All good ideas have three pieces. One, they target a real market need, deliver against that need consistently in the face of current and future competition, and three, they generate the numbers which allows the firm to create and capture value. Rest is academic. Business world is complicated. Individuals make seemingly strange decisions all the time. And predicting such decisions with precision is next to impossible. The disruptive innovation model isn't and will never be perfect. But by helping strategists look in different places and see things in a different way, there's little doubt that it is useful. Innovation-driven growth is the way forward. Disruptive innovations are pushing companies to look in places that were otherwise ignored. The only caveat is one has to have vision to separate the early stage developments that have the highest potential to drive change from those that are likely to fizzle. Disruptive innovations today have expanded views on sustainability, especially in corporate world, where corporate responsibility till now was mainly seen as a way to keep the company's reputation out of trouble. IMRC 2019, ladies and gentlemen, theme disruptive paradigm shift and sustainability revolution in two days starting today will deliberate vigorously to establish different areas of disruption for a more sustainable future. Our Honorable Chief Guest for the occasion, Union Cabinet Minister of Science, Technology, Environment and Forest, Dr. Harsh Vardhan, Guest of Honor, Dr. Jitendra K. Das, Four School of Management, and Dr. Ashley Pennington, Dean Research, British University, Dubai, our Chairman, Sharad Jepuriyaji, our Vice Chairman, Srivats Jepuriyaji, and Director, Jepuria Noida, Dr. D.N. Pandey. I invite all of the dignitaries on the dais for the lamp lighting ceremony. Thank you, sir. I now request Dr. Das to kindly deliver his inaugural address. Good morning to you all. <clears throat> I have a little sore throat, so you'll have to bear with my voice for some time. Um, I'm really very pleased and happy, and I consider it as an honor for me to be invited uh, to this uh, conference. And uh, it's a uh, uh, worthwhile experience for me to share uh, some of my uh, thoughts on this. Uh, Dr. Harsh Vardhan, who is the Union Minister for Science and Technology, Earth Sciences and Environment, Sri Sharad Jaipuriya Ji, Sri Shivas Jaipuriya Ji, Professor Pennington, Dr. Pandey, members of the faculty of Jaipuriya Institute, staff members, participants to this conference, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I was tasked by Dr. Pandey to come and share for about 10 minutes uh, some of my thoughts on uh, research and uh, uh, sustainability paradigm shift. And I got confused because uh, the, the overall theme is uh, research management and uh, the actual theme for this conference is uh, disruptive uh, paradigm shift and sustainability revolution. Now, uh, so I asked him, do you want me to speak on research or on sustainability development? He said, speak on research. I said, I've actually prepared for sustainable development because that's uh, the opportunity I never want to miss if I get to speak on. So I said, okay, I'll try to mix the two. And professors are sometimes uh, can do it relatively easily to mix and match different themes and concepts. So. Uh, Talk of uh, uh, you know any development that we have, and the definition of sustainable development was uh, given by Sri Jaipuriji. Uh, we need to grow, and when we say we need to grow, it is actually essentially economic growth. So when you grow, uh, you produce. So economic growth means uh, the production activities will increase. When production activities increase, uh, a lot of uh, what we call the byproducts will also be released into the environment. Now, when the byproduct is released in the environment, they go into the ecosystem. We are part of the ecosystem. We are all 
sub elements of a uh, sub ecosystem which is part of the larger ecosystem now any by product of one ecosystem is in nature is actually used up by another ecosystem like you look at uh, the tiger you know save tiger i asked people like why do you want to save tiger some of the learned people got confused i said i think it is more fashionable to save tiger i said come on a lot of learned people don't know what's the meaning behind save tiger now save tiger essentially means this is top of the food chain so if you save tiger it means the deers are surviving which means the plantation is there and the entire ecosystem is uh, able to be maintained that's how tiger exists so saving tiger means saving the ecosystem of tiger which would mean that is saving the ecosystem of a deer saving the ecosystem of uh, the plantations and therefore down the line to microorganism level right so in nature anything that is coming out of a tiger model would be used by some microorganisms in the uh, forest right so everything is consumed so there is no waste so anything which is a waste for one ecosystem is a reasonable good input for another ecosystem that's how nature is you know the the, the animals rot in the uh, wildlife or forest is a food for something else so that's how it is now comes the human beings so when humans are there we want to be have uh, a good life better life we have the brains uh, we have the capacity so we start producing things so you start manufacturing things when you start producing a lot of uh, by products and a lot of waste comes out of it. now these waste should be used up by another ecosystem now when another ecosystem is not able to use that waste then that becomes a problem for the larger ecosystem and we call it pollution so that's the pollution so pollution is stand alone it stays in the environment it is not contributing to the well being of another ecosystem right so therefore we call it pollution you see the pollution the traffic so many vehicles emissions and all that fact is coming up the fact is come up they have these chimneys you know so coming out the toxic gases coming out because you want to have a, a nice uh, uh, cell phone uh, in your pocket so you should know what we call the pollution which is coming out of cell phone manufacturing you as a consumer may not be concerned about how much pollution this is causing but then it is causing so much pollution somewhere and now the pollution is global in nature that we know very well now so now the problem is that uh, how do we minimize the pollution how do we minimize the you know ecosystem management so the world sat up and took notice of these problems which humans are causing because development and uh, what you call uh, the uh, uh, environment are always at loggerheads with each other the development typically means say like, economic development which means you produce when you produce there is a by product and that damages the environment so both are together so if you have more production there will be more damage to the nature that's how it is so therefore the the united nations as a world community we they sat up and they had the first major uh, uh, decision recommendation made in way back in 1992 the rio summit 1992 and then we have a series of uh, um, uh, resolutions made and one of the major outcome of this was what we are now more familiar with carbon footprint so carbon trading became a a feasible market instrument to control the carbon footprint of an organization so you know we are familiar with carbon footprint now every industry was defined by the un charter how much of carbon you can release so if you release more than that you are to be penalized if you release less than that then you will be rewarded which means you can sell the balance to someone else you might have read in the newspaper that dmrc the delhi metro i think 3 4 years back i read in the newspaper they sold the carbon emission to a international firm for 125 crore rupees this 3 4 years back because our metro system they calculate based on how much carbon is to be consumed for transporting human being from location a to location b this is standard international law so you transmit so i mean you move so many people from this location your carbon emission should be so much but you are actually releasing only this much which is less so this the difference you can sell so they sold uh, 125 crores so someone who is emitting more carbon they either they pay penalty which could be let's say 200 crore equivalent right so you pay 200 crore equivalent or you buy carbon from someone else so therefore market uh, on carbon trading uh, comes up so this all came up because of uh, these uh, the resolutions by the uh, united nations so that's how uh, we are in today in terms of uh, 
uh, managing ourselves and uh, uh, while trying to develop uh, what is good model for controlling uh, these uh, environmental concerns uh, a lot of research needs to be done and a lot of books have come up uh, and you know the definition of uh, sustainable development which was given by the Brundtland Commission if you are interested you would know 1987 the first meeting of United Nations that they called Brundtland Commission Brundtland uh, lady she was the uh, uh, prime minister of Norway she was heading that committee and they were tasked with this uh, objective to define how do we conduct ourselves. So she gave a definition in that particular report on sustainable development which means you consume anything and everything today in a way that does not jeopardize the future generation for consuming the similar thing. So in a, in a practical perspective, uh, you know, to explain to school kids which I have done sometimes, you go to a park you know, how do you translate a sustainable development uh, definition into a real practice? It can be at a individual level, it can be at the corporate and at the national level. At the individual level, for example, if you go to a park, the park is very nice, green and everything, you go and enjoy and you know, party and picnic, and when you leave, you leave all the litters on the park. Okay? That's not a sustainable development behavior. So you should leave the park in a way which is actually, if not at the same stage as when you found it, but actually better when you leave the space. That means you not only don't leave any dirty thing there, but also you may do some additional thing to make sure the next generation, the next uh, uh, party or revelers who come to the same spot, they uh, like it and then they appreciate it. Because you, when you came in, you liked it. <coughs> So why should you leave it dirty for someone else? So that's the fundamental concept behind uh, uh, sustainable development and <coughs> we must do it at individual level and then that's how the nation comes up and starts uh, uh, doing it, right? So uh, <coughs> there are many <coughs> research that is being done to formulate policies and because you have to understand we need development also, we need economic growth. And we also need good environment. And if the environment is not taken care of, you have a major, major problem as a planet. And uh, just uh, on the side, uh, we need to be concerned. And if you go into slightly different domain on the environment management, environment system, there is a separate school of thought that says that the Earth is a living organism. And there is a currently research on by the Japanese scientists. They are saying the water is intelligent. Okay, it reacts. It reacts and the size of reaction of water depends on the size of the water body. So it says therefore C <coughs> is intelligent and one evidence he gives of that intelligence of C is any unwanted thing that is thrown in the uh, sea will actually be uh, pushed to the shore because C doesn't want it. So you have anything coming here you will actually remove it. So this is what this is C is intelligent. Now the extension of this is that if the pollution goes beyond the point this living organism will react and then human civilization is a sitting duck for a living organism called earth. So these uh, thinkers say that you better take care of it else the earth will eat you up. And if you go back into the history, the last ice age was just about 10,000 years ago and 10,000 years ago the uh, uh, humans had already actually decimated. I said, that happened because of pollution earlier on. There were a lot of huge carbon emissions on earth because of forest fires and all that kind of things. So this uh, living organism reacted and you know kind of finished off everything. And then uh, the sea level went down, the ice, ice caps went up and it was able to kind of you know uh, regain control on its uh, survival. So these uh, people are saying that we are on the verge of that where uh, uh, the pollution has reached a level where this uh, earth or the sea will react. So it's high time we control ourselves and behave properly. Thank you very much.